Well, hello and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial and golly, hasn't it been a long time? Well, I'm ready to shake off the cobwebs and get started. Kick off this new era with uh, one of the simplest and coolest camera effects that I know of. Super simple, uh, super effective, great for like a top-down sort of, sort of view. Makes all of your assets look like they're sort of miniatures on a tabletop. It's called a tilt shift camera effect. Super simple, super easy. We're just mucking about with some camera settings. So it's a good intro to that kind of uh, working with uh, working with camera values directly if you're into that kind of thing. So I'm just here in the third person template, just in a fresh uh, Unreal Engine 5 project. Well, actually, it's my development project, but that's okay. There's nothing else here except uh, template assets. So uh, we need our third person map, the third person character and such, which if you do not have, you can go down to add, go to add feature or content pack, Click on third person and then add to project. And then all of these assets will be uh, added for you to play with, which is really good. So if we find our map, which will be in third person, then maps, it's our third person map. And then see in our blueprints folder, we have our third person character. We're just going to control C and control V just to make a fresh one. Click on the text so we can rename it. I'm just gonna put tilt shift at the end. Of course, you can also adapt this for your own your own characters in your own games is just very simple camera trickery. I would recommend duplicating your character first just to preserve your code, you know, make a, a little local backup so that you don't break anything. And then over in world settings, which I've already got open up here on the right, but you can find this window just up here. Just go window, world settings, and that'll bring it up somewhere on screen and you can dock it wherever you like. Uh, you should already have the game mode override set to the third person game mode. Just take your tilt shift character, drag it onto the default pawn class, which uh, should be set to the default third person pawn. And if not, well, you're gonna wanna set it to your tilt shift character. So we'll file and save all just to be safe and then open up our newly created tilt shift uh, third person character. So here we see just the, the default mechanics. There's nothing really special here, except it looks like for some reason this still uses the old uh, inputs, input actions. Perhaps in a, in a future video, maybe I'll, uh, have a crack at uh, showing you guys how the new input system works. It can be a little daunting, but there's really nothing to worry about. It's actually quite intuitive once you uh, once you get your head around it. Then if we go to viewport, we can see what we're working with, which is just a mesh, uh, the capsule, there's an arrow just to indicate which way is forwards. And most importantly, we have our camera boom, which is just a stick that our camera is attached to the end of, and our follow camera, which is what the uh, player sort of moves around when you swing your mouse about. So um, with that knowledge in mind, let's head back to our map here. And I'm just going to drop our pawn just straight here into the level so we can see our in-game camera view. Now the problem we're going to have here, if we go to details, uh, and if we got our, our tilt shift character, we want to select our camera boom. We are using the pawn control rotation, which means uh, well, the, the pawn is using the view and control rotation of the pawn. So as we swing our mouse around, the camera boom is going to move about with it. And if this collides with walls and such, so if I, if I move this over like this, you can see the, the the boom is going to adjust the camera length, or rather its own length, because the camera is bumping into the wall. So if we don't want to have that happen, we're going to have to uh, change a few things. Uh, namely, that's going to be this uh, inherit pitch. We don't want the up and down. Um, of the mouse movement to change the elevation of the uh, of the camera. So if we untick inherit pitch, and get myself a better angle here, we can click on our camera boom and sort of adjust our angle here. I think something like uh, minus 40, we'll start there. Uh, we'll grab our camera boom actually and set our target arm length for something fairly high like 1600 something like that. And we can see in our little uh, thumbnail window here that uh, that's pretty far away. If I find that in, it's sort of going to change our view ever so slightly, sort of change the, the vertical width there. We can set the camera's uh, aspect ratio. We can set this to a fixed aspect ratio if we wanted to. Constrain aspect ratio, so we can play with that. Actually, as, a, as an alternative, as sort of a sideways suggestion, if you go to components and add, you can add a sign camera, cine camera, which is a, it's, it's like a regular camera, but it has more sort of cinematic uh, camera effects, sort of better suited for, for well, cinematics than cutscenes and such. But um, 
you know, people, some people can find it a bit more flexible, especially if you have a film background. Anyway, we want to just play with this field of view for the time being. So it's going to load this, say, 45, even lower, perhaps down to 40, perhaps even 35. Hmm. Yeah, I think we might go a bit shallower with our angle, actually. Set it to minus 30. Even minus 20. Minus 20 might be pretty good. Uh, minus 20. Slightly up. Okay, fantastic. And our field of view. Um, 50 looks pretty good, actually. We're getting a sort of miniature-ish kind of appearance there, which is great. Uh, so let's stick with these values. So what have we got? The field of view is 50. Camera boom is at 1600. So if we go into our actual blueprint here, uh, not the event graph, we just want the camera boom. Uh, uncheck inherent pitch, as we know, uh, the rotation. Where was it? Um, minus 25, right. Minus 25 to start with, 1600 for the length. And then with the camera, we'll go uh, 50. I think 50 was our, was our good. Yep, 50. All right. We file and save all. I'm just going to delete this guy out of our viewport here, off our map. Then we'll hit play. Ah, so we're getting pitch of the camera. Why is that happening? Ah, seems we've got use pawn control rotation ticked on the camera. Which is uh, weird. Hopefully that fixes that. Ah, yeah, that, brilliant. Okay, perfect. So now we're not. Oh, yeah, we kind of do run into the wall as we get close to it. This may not be a problem depending on the style of your game and the way that you've got collision set up, but uh, this is something we can perhaps work with. Uh, oh yeah, I, I had a feeling there was a checkbox for this, so if we uncheck our do collision test and then hit play again, our camera boom won't, uh, won't collide with the balls. And this could be a problem obviously because you stop seeing your player character. <laughs> um, you have to mitigate that somehow. I have uh, a couple of videos, I think, in my backlog about occlusion. Uh, one with like a silhouette through objects. I think I made it for the top down, uh, like pixel art, a uh, little 2.5D scene, which I may leave a link to in the description. If not, uh, please feel free to check out the backlog of videos. There's a lot of material on my channel. Much of it's pretty good. And I think I'm pretty sure all of it still works in the latest versions of Unreal. Okay, so let's start mucking about with our camera because the key thing to tilt shift cameras is the sort of the focal length with the, the blur distance at the top and bottom of the screen. So I prototyped making a post-process effect for this, uh, which is quite effective and uh, also quite flexible, uh, but it wasn't quite realistic. It didn't quite hit the mark of what I wanted. So I decided just to grab the camera and just muck about with camera values directly and find a good balance that works. So if we come up into the details with the camera selected and start looking for uh, our aperture, so we'll enable our aperture, that's our f-stop, and so it's to say zero, can we go as low as 0 0.5? So maximum aperture, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. perhaps 1.0 is the lowest. Lens control to the blades of the diaphragm. Uh, we'll reset this bottom one back to the default. I'm not sure that can do much harm. Um, sensor width, uh, we'll set to, I think it was 150 that I was playing with. And finally, our focal, focal distance. Uh, we want to set this to the arm length of our camera boom. So that was 1600. Uh, focal distance. 1600. Okay, let's compile that, save, and see what it looks like. Incredible. Okay, that's quite amazing. So we got our uh, blurring, which is very cool, very nice to see. Um, some nice subtle blurs at the top and bottom of the screen. And this is pretty much it for our uh, tilt shift effects. And uh, we can go further with the blur, uh, like I said, with a, a post process, but I think just the just the focus might um, might get the effect there that we want. Although if we wanted to, we could see our maximum aperture, if we got this to zero, or perhaps zero point one. Um, should I change anything? Zero point one. Always we'll try zero. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's changed, changed anything. That gives us this beautiful tilt shift camera effect. 
How cool is that? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, if there's any interest, uh, I might make a follow-up to this where I use a post-process effect and we can control the degree of the blur. Um, adds a tiny little bit of overhead, but not too much, um, and probably acceptable depending on your frame budget. So, um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, if you made it this far, um, please, uh, on your way out, just like the video if you can, and um, please feel free to check out the, the backlog on my channel. Give me any comments and feedback you want, any um, suggestions or uh, requests. Uh, I'll start taking requests and seeing if I can make some cool mechanics. Uh, I'm excited, actually. I'm excited to get back into making YouTube videos. So, um, with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.